A volcano erupted in the Philippines covering the nearby towns in Ash. Deep beneath the ocean's surface lies a sleeping giant that could dwarf the catastrophic eruptions of history. Scientists warn that the world's largest caldera, Apolaki, may be on the verge of awakening, with the potential to unleash unimaginable power and chaos. Are we ready for the fury of the Earth's most formidable volcano? Let's find out in today's video. The Apalaki caldera is situated on the Benham Rise, an underwater plateau located to the east of Luzon in the Philippine Sea. The caldera is named after Apalaki, the Filipino god of war and the sun, reflecting its formidable size and nature. With an estimated diameter of about 150 kilometers, 93 miles, it is considered the largest known caldera on Earth. The formation of the Apalaki caldera is believed to have been the result of a series of massive volcanic eruptions that occurred millions of years ago. These eruptions caused the collapse of the magma chamber, leading to the creation of the caldera. The geological processes involved in its formation are still being studied, but it is thought to have involved significant tectonic and volcanic activity. Due to its underwater location, direct observations of geothermal features within the Apalaki caldera are limited. However, hydrothermal vents and underwater volcanic activity are likely present, driven by the heat from the underlying magma chamber. These features contribute to the dynamic and complex nature of the caldera. The Apalaki caldera's volcanic history is not well documented due to its remote and submerged location. However, geological studies suggest that the caldera was formed by a series of large-scale volcanic eruptions, possibly during the Miocene to Pliocene epochs. The exact timing and sequence of these eruptions remain subjects of ongoing research. The Apalaki caldera poses several potential hazards, though the likelihood of a major eruption in the near future is not well understood. A significant volcanic eruption could have widespread impacts, including the release of large volumes of ash and volcanic gases into the atmosphere, potentially affecting global climate. An underwater volcanic eruption or collapse within the caldera could trigger tsunamis, posing risks to coastal communities in the Philippines and surrounding regions. Earthquakes associated with volcanic activity and tectonic movements could pose risks to the region. And sudden releases of pressure from underwater hydrothermal systems could result in explosive events, impacting marine ecosystems and potentially reaching the surface. Determining the probability of an eruption for any volcano, including the Apalaki caldera, requires extensive geological monitoring and analysis. As of now, specific details about the Apalaki caldera's volcanic activity, including its potential for future eruptions, are still emerging due to its recent discovery. Comparative analysis with other major calderas, Yellowstone caldera. The Yellowstone caldera, often referred to as the Yellowstone supervolcano, is one of the most well-known and closely monitored volcanic systems in the world. Located primarily in the U.S. state of Wyoming, with parts extending into Montana and Idaho, the caldera is a focal point of Yellowstone National Park, renowned for its geothermal features and natural beauty. The Yellowstone caldera was formed by a series of colossal volcanic eruptions that occurred over the past 2.1 million years. The three most significant eruptions are the Huckleberry Ridge eruption, 2.1 million years ago, which eruption created the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff and formed the first caldera, the Mesa Falls eruption, 1.3 million years ago, which eruption formed the Henry's Fork caldera, and the Lava Creek eruption, 640,000 years ago, which eruption created the current Yellowstone caldera, with an area measuring approximately 72 kilometers, 45 miles, by 55 kilometers, 34 miles. The caldera itself is a large sunken area resulting from the collapse of the ground following the massive eruptions. It encompasses a complex system of geothermal features, including geysers, hot springs, fumaroles, and mud pots, driven by a shallow magma chamber beneath the surface. Yellowstone is home to about 10,000 geothermal features, including the iconic Old Faithful Geyser, 
which erupts at regular intervals. The geothermal activity is a result of the heat from the underlying magma chamber, causing groundwater to heat up and create spectacular hydrothermal phenomena. Long Valley Caldera The Long Valley Caldera, located in eastern California, is one of the most significant and studied volcanic features in North America. Known for its immense size and geological activity, the caldera has been a focal point for volcanic research and monitoring. The Long Valley Caldera was formed about 760,000 years ago during a massive volcanic eruption that released approximately 600 cubic kilometers of rhyolitic magma. This eruption produced the Bishop Tuff, a widespread layer of volcanic ash and pumice that covers much of the region. The caldera itself measures about 32 kilometers, 20 miles long, and 18 kilometers, 11 miles wide. The floor of the caldera has been resurgent over time, with a central uplift known as the resurgent dome, which is about 10 kilometers, 6 miles, in diameter. The resurgent dome indicates ongoing magmatic activity beneath the surface. The Long Valley Caldera is characterized by significant geothermal activity. Hot springs, fumaroles, and hydrothermal systems are abundant, particularly in the vicinity of the resurgent dome. The Casa Diablo Hot Springs area is a notable geothermal site, and geothermal energy is harnessed for power generation. The Long Valley Caldera has experienced a complex history of volcanic activity, including the Bishop Tuff eruption, 760,000 years ago, which cataclysmic eruption formed the caldera and deposited vast amounts of ash and pumice across the region. The post-caldera eruptions, following the formation of the caldera, numerous smaller eruptions occurred, with the most recent activity involving the formation of the Inyo and Mono craters a chain of rhyolitic domes and craters stretching north from the caldera. The Mammoth Mountain Volcanism, Mammoth Mountain, located on the southwestern rim of the caldera, is a separate volcanic system that has experienced eruptions over the past 110,000 years. The most recent eruption occurred about 57,000 years ago, La Pacana Caldera. The La Pacana Caldera is part of the central volcanic zone of the Andes, a region known for its intense volcanic activity. The caldera was formed around 4 million years ago during a series of catastrophic eruptions. It measures approximately 60 kilometers, 37 miles, in diameter, making it one of the largest calderas on Earth. The formation of La Pacana involved the collapse of a massive magma chamber, resulting in the creation of the caldera. The volcanic activity that led to the caldera's formation produced vast quantities of ignimbrites, particularly the Atana ignimbrite, which is a prominent geological feature of the region. The volcanic history of the La Pacana caldera is marked by several significant eruptions and ongoing geothermal activity. The initial formation, four million years ago, the caldera was formed during a massive eruption that released a colossal volume of volcanic material, leading to the collapse of the magma chamber and the creation of the caldera. The Atana ignimbrite, in which large ignimbrite deposit was produced during the formation of the caldera and covers a substantial area around La Pacana. The post-caldera activity, following the formation of the caldera, the region has experienced numerous smaller eruptions and lava flows. The emplacement of lava domes, such as the Chao da Cite dome, is indicative of ongoing volcanic activity. Due to its remote location, the La Pacana caldera is not as extensively monitored as some other large volcanic systems. However, it is of significant interest to geologists and volcanologists. Pastos Grandes Caldera The Pastos Grandes Caldera, located in the Altiplano Puna volcanic complex in southwestern Bolivia, is one of the major calderas in the central volcanic zone of the Andes. The Pastos Grandes Caldera is a large volcanic depression formed by a series of catastrophic eruptions. The caldera measures approximately 60 kilometers, 37 miles, in diameter, making it one of the largest calderas in the region. It is situated in the Altiplano Puna volcanic complex, 
a high-altitude plateau known for its extensive volcanic activity. The formation of the Pastos Grandes Caldera involved the collapse of a massive magma chamber beneath the surface following explosive eruptions. These eruptions ejected vast amounts of volcanic material, leading to the caldera's creation. The region is characterized by thick ignimbrite deposits, lava flows, and post-caldera volcanic features such as lava domes and smaller craters. The volcanic history of the Pastos Grandes Caldera is marked by several key events. The caldera forming eruptions. The caldera was formed by a series of explosive eruptions that occurred approximately 5 to 2 million years ago. These eruptions released large volumes of pyroclastic material, primarily ignimbrites, which are widespread in the region. The post-caldera activity, following the initial caldera forming events, the region has experienced numerous smaller eruptions and volcanic activity. This includes the emplacement of lava domes and smaller eruptive centers within and around the caldera. Toba Caldera The Toba Caldera, located on the island of Sumatra in Indonesia, is one of the world's largest and most significant volcanic structures. Known for its massive size and catastrophic eruption history, the Toba Caldera has profound implications for geological science and human history. The Toba Caldera was formed by a series of colossal volcanic eruptions, the most significant of which occurred approximately 74,000 years ago. The caldera measures about 100 kilometers, 62 miles in length, and 30 kilometers, 19 miles, in width, making it one of the largest volcanic structures on Earth. The formation of the Toba Caldera involved the collapse of a massive magma chamber after the explosive eruption. This eruption released an estimated 2,800 cubic kilometers of volcanic material, including ash and pumice. The collapse created the current caldera, which is partially filled by Lake Toba, the largest volcanic lake in the world. The volcanic history of the Toba caldera is marked by several key events. The youngest Toba Tuff eruption, 74,000 years ago, also known as the Toba Super Eruption, was one of the largest volcanic events in the last two million years. It ejected massive amounts of volcanic material leading to the formation of the current caldera and Lake Toba. And the post-caldera activity, following the super eruption, the region has experienced numerous smaller eruptions and volcanic activity. The most recent activity includes the formation of lava domes and smaller eruptive centers within the caldera. La Garita Caldera The La Garita Caldera located in the San Juan Mountains of southwestern Colorado, USA, is one of the largest and most significant calderas in the world. It is particularly famous for its association with one of the most massive volcanic eruptions in Earth's history, the eruption of the Fish Canyon Tuff. The La Garita Caldera was formed approximately 28 million years ago during a colossal volcanic eruption that released an estimated 5,000 cubic kilometers of material, primarily the Fish Canyon Tuff. This eruption is considered one of the largest known explosive eruptions in the Earth's history. The caldera measures about 35 kilometers, 22 miles, by 75 kilometers, 47 miles, making it one of the largest calderas in the world. The eruption led to the collapse of the magma chamber, creating the large depression that characterizes the caldera today. The Fish Canyon Tuff which is a densely welded ignimbrite, covers a vast area around the caldera and is a key geological feature. The volcanic history of the Lagarita caldera is marked by the following key events. The Fish Canyon Tuff eruption, 28 million years ago. This cataclysmic eruption is one of the largest known in Earth's history. It produced an enormous volume of pyroclastic material leading to the formation of the Lagarita caldera. And the post-caldera activity, following the formation of the caldera, there have been smaller eruptions and volcanic activity in the region. The most significant post-caldera volcanic activity includes the formation of lava domes and smaller eruptive centers within and around the caldera. Potential explosive force and modern impact of Apalaki caldera eruption. 
An eruption of the Apalaki caldera could potentially surpass the explosive force of all aforementioned calderas, given its immense size. The eruption could release thousands of cubic kilometers of volcanic material. A potential future eruption could reach a volcanic explosivity index, VEI, of 8, the highest on the scale, indicative of a supervolcanic eruption. The injection of large amounts of volcanic ash and sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere could lead to a significant cooling effect on the global climate, known as a volcanic winter. This could result in reduced temperatures, disrupted weather patterns, and impacts on agriculture. Extensive ash fallout could cover large areas, affecting air quality, water supply, and infrastructure. The weight of ash could cause buildings to collapse and damage crops. The caldera's underwater location means an eruption could displace large volumes of water, generating tsunamis that would threaten coastal communities around the Pacific Ocean. An eruption could trigger significant seismic activity, leading to earthquakes and potentially affecting tectonic stability in the region. Ash clouds could severely disrupt air travel across the Asia-Pacific region and beyond, leading to economic losses and logistical challenges. The Benham Rise is a rich fishing ground. An eruption could devastate marine ecosystems, impacting fisheries and the livelihoods of local communities. The immediate area could face evacuations, and the broader region could experience food and water shortages, health crises, and displacement of populations. Could an eruption of the Apalaki caldera trigger volcanic eruptions connected to the Pacific Ring of Fire? The potential for an eruption of the Apalaki caldera to trigger other volcanic eruptions in the Pacific Ring of Fire is a complex and multifaceted question. While the direct triggering of distant volcanoes by a single eruption is generally unlikely, there are several factors to consider. A significant eruption can lead to changes in the pressure within the magma chamber. However, the influence of this pressure change diminishes with distance. Large volcanic eruptions often produce significant seismic activity, including earthquakes. These seismic waves can travel great distances and potentially influence the behavior of other volcanic systems. The likelihood of triggering an eruption in a distant volcano due to seismic activity depends on the existing state of stress within that volcano's magma chamber. Eruptions can disrupt local hydrothermal systems, leading to changes in geothermal activity. This could potentially impact nearby volcanic systems that share a connected hydrothermal network. The Pacific Ring of Fire is characterized by subduction zones, where one tectonic plate is being forced under another. These zones are inherently seismically active and host numerous volcanoes. An eruption within the Ring of Fire can potentially alter the stress distribution along tectonic boundaries, potentially affecting other volcanic regions. Historical data shows instances where major earthquakes have been followed by volcanic eruptions, but these occurrences are often within a relatively close proximity. The 1960 Valdivia earthquake in Chile, for example, was followed by increased volcanic activity in the region. Likewise, supervolcanic eruptions, such as the Toba eruption around 74,000 years ago, had widespread climatic and environmental impacts. However, Direct evidence of such eruptions triggering other distant volcanic eruptions is limited. However, an eruption of the Apalaki caldera would likely have immediate and profound impacts on the surrounding region, potentially triggering local volcanic activity within the Philippine archipelago. Potential Tsunami Impact of an Apalaki Caldera Eruption The eruption of the Apalaki caldera given its underwater location and massive scale, has the potential to generate a significant tsunami. The exact magnitude of such a tsunami would depend on various factors, including the volume of volcanic material ejected, the speed and direction of the displaced water, and the nature of the eruption. The factors influencing tsunami magnitude include the amount of water displaced by an eruption, whether through pyroclastic flows entering the sea or the collapse of volcanic structures, would largely determine the tsunami's size. In addition, explosive eruptions that cause a rapid collapse of the caldera could create larger tsunamis compared to slower, less violent eruptions. Lastly, 
the specific location and depth of the caldera can affect the wave's propagation. A shallower depth could lead to a more pronounced impact. The tsunami waves generated by an eruption in the Apalaki caldera could travel across the Pacific Ocean, impacting numerous countries such as the Philippines, Japan, Taiwan, China, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia, Guam, and other Pacific islands, and Australia. What would be the impact on Benham Rise if the Apalaki caldera erupts? An eruption could cause the caldera to collapse, creating a new depression and possibly forming a resurgent dome over time. Extensive lava flows and pyroclastic deposits could reshape the seafloor of the Benham Rise. Significant seismic activity might be triggered, potentially causing submarine landslides and altering the tectonic landscape. The eruption could disrupt marine ecosystems, covering the seafloor with volcanic ash and pyroclastic material and altering water chemistry and temperature. New hydrothermal vents could form, creating unique ecosystems, though initial disruption would harm existing marine life. The rich fishing grounds of the Benham Rise could be devastated, impacting local fishing communities. Ongoing and future exploration for minerals and gas could be hindered, affecting economic opportunities. The eruption could lead to the formation of new geological features, such as volcanic islands or seamounts within the Benham Rise. Volcanic activity would redistribute sediments, potentially altering ocean currents and sediment deposition patterns. In a nutshell, while the eruption would have significant impacts, it is unlikely to completely erase Benham Rise from the map. The Benham Rise is a vast underwater plateau, and while volcanic activity could dramatically alter its landscape, the overall structure would likely remain. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated on more fascinating topics like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. Like this video if you found it informative, and don't forget to share it with your friends and family to spread the knowledge. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. In the next video. In the next video.